Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us again with that I may know him today. Uh, I'm still your host, Sister Crystal is saying, and we have Pastor Delbert Childs. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for helping us out. Um, we appreciate you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about taking advantage of the kingdom or in the kingdom. Praise God. It goes both ways, believe it or not. Um, and uh, we just want to get into some aspects that could affect a kingdom uh, person or a kingdom son. And let's, let's get into it. Praise God. Um, so what does it mean to you to take advantage in the kingdom and why is it so rampant? Um. To, to take advantage, again, we're, we're talking kingdom, and so mm -hmm. everyone's saved, filled, you know, following the Lord Jesus Christ. And so to, to take advantage of someone would just simply be to, to disregard um, the, the call or the plan of God for them, um, to, to, to inappropriately um, have dominion, I'll say it that way, exercise dominion over them, over, over an individual. Uh, when the Bible clearly states in Genesis that God gave us dominion over the fish, the fowl, not over each other, not over man. Uh, and so for someone who's trying to um, to do that, again, out of order, just to the point. Praise God. Praise God. Um, is this taking advantage, you know, only for a certain race or a certain people, a certain tribe? A certain nation and other people are just excluded from it, or that's just everybody. Yeah, actually, it's everybody. Um, it happens. Um, all tribes, all nations, all ethnic groups, all denominations uh, within the kingdom. It, it happens. It definitely happens. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing more of it in this day and age. I don't know. It's like as we progress in the kingdom in time, it's becoming more rampant and more serious. Um, I've well, let's not go into what I've seen. But um, what are some different ways that some leaders? So we'll go from that aspect first. Okay. Take advantage of the flock. Okay. Um, so some of the things that I've seen: um, well-intended leaders. Um, God has given them a vision to do and fulfill an assignment, and they are going for it. Passionate about it. Everything is there. The anointing is there. But in their efforts to accomplish what God has given them to do, they'll put the wrong person in the right role. Or I'll say it this way, they'll, they'll put the right person in the wrong role just because there's a need. Anyone who's mm -hmm. been in the church or been around the church for any given period of time knows um, there's always a need for someone to serve in some capacity in the church. Um, God will send someone to a ministry um, they have multiple gifts and they're able to do a variety of things but based upon the need they'll put them someplace where that's out of season and so they're doing something out of season mm -hmm. just because of a need the pastor is well intended that it that is a genuine need but again you're, you're utilizing one of God's children in the capacity out of season and that's like planting a rose in the winter time expecting it to blossom in there to be fruit and then, so I'm just simply saying that to say um, they didn't mean any harm uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way, we didn't mean any harm, but we did something that we should not have done. Hmm. Praise God. So it's like in, in, in that way you, you weary the person. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And at the same time, watch, if they're, if they're functioning in one of their giftings out of season, uh, the people that are serving under them are also experiencing a little bit of undue stress and frustration. That can yeah. happen also. And again, nobody means any harm, uh, but it happens. Interesting. Yeah. So I want to say that that example is from the kingdom, kingdom minded people. Mm -hmm. Today in this day and age we see all over social media um, some horrendous things that people do in the name of Jesus. The word of God says in Luke that Jesus said that you know a lot of people will come in my name. Yeah. Don't follow them. <laughs> if you go to a church yeah. and they're using raid, you know the thing they use for mosquitoes to spray on people. You're probably not in the presence of God. You should probably um, yeah. find a door. If you have somebody who's jumping on you, you, you see some animalistic behaviors being shown or something like that, you should check the Spirit of God in that place. Yeah. You know, and probably find um, your way out. What are some ways that the brethren mm -hmm. take advantage of leaders in the kingdom? Um, 
the the sense of I don't want to use the word entitlement, hmm. but um, a lot of people because they haven't matured in the things of God, uh, haven't fully applied. They've heard it, but they haven't fully applied the truth that, for example, God is my all in all. God is my source. Instead, they go to the pastor, uh, trying to manipulate him into doing what it is they want him to do. Mm -hmm. Or, pastor, that message that you preached was a little bit too mean to the people or what have you. Uh, trying to control uh, him and what he does. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and uh, again, all out of order, all not of God. Um, but people will do it. Um, try to get the pastor to do things that they want him to do. Um, no. And if he's a true pastor, you know, he'll lovingly give, and I'll say it this way, one of my favorite, what I, what I teach my students, one of the most uh, awesome words in the dictionary is no. And so that pastor lovingly telling them no and doing and obeying what God, or not just pastor, but whomever the leader is, uh, to say no and to pursue what God has told them to do. But yes, people will, the brethren will do it. Um, I've seen it done before, and I've also seen that my pastor at that particular time uh, firmly give a no. And, uh, you know, I had to step out of the room and laugh because how he did it was, I mean, it was funny. But I was glad that he did. So. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Um, I was reading in a book by Andrew Murray, Absolute Surrender. Um, it was talking about how the brethren have turned the leaders into babysitters. Mm. When they refuse to grow. Mm. They refuse to have their own belief, have their own faith. It's like you want to depend on somebody else's. Mm -hmm. After entering the kingdom, it is necessary to grow. So at the point where, you know, I mean, if you if something is going on, reach out. Yeah. Reach out. But at the point where you refuse to read your Bible, you refuse to grow, you refuse to pray, you refuse to do what it is that you have to do in the kingdom to grow. And, you know... 1 o'clock, you're calling your pastor to pray, 2 o'clock, a.m., or, you know, every little thing, you know, or, or you refuse to even make use of the ministers who, are, um, who have been assigned, who have been assigned to you, and you, you run to the, well, that's a leader too. Basically, you refuse to grow, and you turn the, the leaders into babysitters. So instead of them to be teaching and training and whatnot, they're running after the brethren to babysit. Um, that's not the purpose of the kingdom. Um, just, to, just to put that out there. Um, so, oh, let me see. What direct uh, relationship does, I guess I, I just answered that question, but I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> does um, spiritual growth have to do with taking advantage yeah. Of the brethren, yeah. Well, it, 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 <laughs> again, just piggybacking on what you said, yes. Yeah. And, and that is that, that um, it's important um, when you come into the kingdom to, uh, as you grow spiritually, uh, you begin to stop doing those things, that, mm -hmm. those inappropriate things like constantly calling the pastor for prayer, constantly reaching out for, for not that you're not supposed to, mm -hmm. but uh, reaching out for things that as you grow, you learn how to deal with those things spiritually based on the Word of God. And so, the, the more we take in of God and His Word, uh, the more mature we can become and we change the way we do things. And um, taking advantage of even those that are in leadership, um, you know, begins to become minimal. And we allow them to function in the capacity that, they're so, that they should be to us, mm -hmm. which is again, a you know, spiritual leader imparting the things of God and, and not having to micromanage our problems. Uh, because we've gone to God and God has shown us how to deal with it. Praise God. Yeah. So it's all part of the growth process. It's not like somebody has stepped out of line. Right. It's part of it. When you in it, when you're a babe in Christ, when you're starting in Christ, or when you are. So it's not necessarily that you just gave your life to Christ today. But there's a decision you make for Jesus. There's a decision you make to grow. Uh, when you start in Christ, you know you go in, and then you decide to grow. And then as you're growing, you go through experiences that harden you, that give you endurance, patience, and all these things that you need for battles that are coming. And as you're doing that, the need to depend on somebody else instead of God. Granted, when you're coming in, you, sh you, know, you, you need a backup. <laughs> you need a, but it's necessary. You know, it starts to be weaned 
out. You start to be winning, uh, it wins away from you. And you know, until you, you can stand on your own two feet. And then if you need something, it's mostly like a prayer of agreement. Right. Right. Or sometimes, you know, you, you face something that is bigger than you and you need somebody who has gone up farther than you to speak over that situation. Yes, praise God. But um, so in your experience, what can be done to rectify the situation of taking advantage in the kingdom? Um, again, we know that God, again, Father God is always going to be our source. Mm -hmm. um, for the individual, it's going to be... Um, do what you heard from the beginning, which is get in the Word, take in more of the Word, uh, spend more time with God, uh, position yourself so that you can mature in the things of God. For the uh, leader, um, humble yourself. Um, you know, it's good to be zealous. It's good to be aspiring to fulfill, and, and uh, God has a plan, but it'll all happen in God's time because God gave you the vision. Mm -hmm. and God begun the work in you, it'll come to pass. Just do it His way. That's what I say. Praise God. And that's all we have today with that I may know Him. Thank you again for Thank coming you. on this segment of that I may know Him. <laughs>